at a lively wedding celebration, Cass, a multi-talented DJ working on his music career, just played a song he recently dropped and it was fire. Luckily for him, JJC Skills from the 419 squad heard the song and loved it. He asked Cass, I beg, who produced this beat for you? And Cass mentioned a guy named Michael, aka Don Jazzy. At this time, Don Jazzy had just left his former group Solek and had nothing going on. Mineti Cass informed him that JJC Skills was looking for him. Don Jazzy left everything and went to meet JJC Skills. JJC Skills expressed his interest in having Don Jazzy join his production team for his newly formed record label, Backbone Records and Don Jazzy agreed. Meanwhile, along the way, MP Master Plan, a member of the 419 squad, approached JJC Skills with a funny guy who played the harmonica exceptionally well, the Banch. MP asked if the Banch could join the crew as a musician. JJC Skills explained that the group was already complete but appreciated the Banch's sociable nature, invited the Banch to join them, entertaining both the group and the audience with his harmonical skills. This encounter becomes the foundation of an iconic friendship between the Banch and Don Jazzy, shaping the destiny of Mohit's records. I'm the Banj, or Ski Banj like my Jamaicans call me, Capel like my South Africans call me, Mensa like my Ghanaians call me, Frike in Liberia, Sonko in Kenya, Osinawata blogger in Iran. I'm an entertainer, AMJ, African Michael Jackson. <laughs> Afa, I beg, check if you don't subscribe and please give this video a thumbs up, yeah? Thanks. Old Camp Road is born UK. This was where JJC Skills Studio was located and where Don Jazzy began to harness his production skills using the computer. He already had the idea of making beats, so mixing with the software was easier to understand. At the same time, the band was also visiting the same studio. He wasn't among the group, but he was desperate to join. In the year 2004, Don Jazzy had a misunderstanding with JJC Skills concerning his partnership with Backbone Records. It turns out it wasn't really that official. Don Jazzy felt betrayed and JJC wanted to offer a contract, but he disagreed and left. At this time, Jazzy was already helping the band with his music skills. The band had this charisma of entertaining people. He was the kind of person who would go out of his way to make sure everybody noticed him, either by his harmonica or by making noise and getting attention. Don Jazzy, on the other hand, was on the mission of mastering the art of music making and production. He knew exactly that all Nigeria needed was someone to make them dance and keep them less worried about the circumstances they face. He needed a voice and an excellent performer to showcase and explore this. And as fate would have it, the band was his only choice. Since they both didn't get a contract, they left. Together they built a relationship and made music they were used to enter the Nigerian music industry. It was kinda like a Dre and Easy E moment. Don Jazzy had the music and the production, while the band had the performance and charisma, so it was perfect. By December 2004, they finished the album No Long Thing within two weeks because they needed to make it back to Nigeria before JJC and his crew did. This was where they met Ayo, CEO of Aro 17 Media, who became the manager for some time. Don Jazzy and the Banji's goal was to leave the UK and take their son to Nigeria and start something. They heard Nigeria was making numbers and artists like Style Plus, Two Face Plantation Boys, LD, Two Shots, Rugged Men were selling records. So it was a new and great opportunity to get things started. In 2005, they needed to decide how to distribute the music. So they formed Mohit Record as a partnership share of 50 50. No long term, give me now. This is the making yeah, of the band Jazzy, Mohit Records, R70 Worldwide. On March 2nd, 2005, they dropped the album No Long Thing with a video for songs like Tongolo and Mobile Long One Making Waves. I think this was where the band got the name Coco Master, but you notice the incomplete production in the album because of the hurry. They had to make something better. On the 23rd of May 2006, they dropped Run Down Funk You Up. This album gave them the morale to push the label more effectively. It was during this period they needed enough funds to push things further, so they went to offer a partnership deal with Storm's record boss Obi Asika. The deal was for Mohit record to merge with Storm's record and Don Jazzy was to help them in production. They almost sold Mohit record for 1 million And it's not that we not we changed our mind though that we not collect the money. It was them they were dolling. Obi I was dolling. Obi. <laughs> I'm sorry sir. But you were dolling. <laughs> Delay is danger, they say. Obi Asika wasn't buying the idea before the band got an endorsement deal from Power Fist and everywhere Sobabo. Brandon deals, shows, it was a crazy year for the both of them. Why Me was quite a hit. I can remember my uncle and I dancing to that song. So tell me why me oh, 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 why me
this time they met when they go as a dancer backstage at a show at Uniland. Don Jassy saw how talented he was vocally and offered him to join their label. With the same synergy, Dr. Seed, who has been around since they were in the UK, requested to join the group and they agreed. Same thing for their two brothers, The Prince and K-Switch. So now Mohit Record has Don Jazzy, The Banj, K-Switch, The Prince, Dr. Seed and One Deco. Before the end of 2006, Jazzy informed the fans that a collaborative album will be coming up by next year. On December 11, 2007, they dropped the album Click Vite. Or more, now for years, started to hear better song go. Tracks like Why Me and Booty Call played a crucial role in building anticipation for the Kulikum Vite album, with Don Jazzy producing and co writing every single song on the album, and most of the track carried by his voice backup. When the Cole's vocal performance was outstanding, and of course, the band's charisma was felt too. I think other people were carried on this album. It was after this album that everything started popping off for the Mohit Records, and they set out to drop individual projects. On September 11, 2008, the band's album The Entertainer was released. This album featured popular tracks like Suddenly and Fall in Love. I swear, I know if you forget this song. She Genevieve even Naju was in the video. On April 12, 2009, One Day Co's debut album, Motion to Mohit, was released. On April 11, 2010, Dr. Seed's album, Turning Point, was released too. Remember, all the tracks in these projects were produced and co-written by Don Jazzy. It was clear he was the mastermind behind all the creative processes in the label. Oh. Disrespect Jazzy because it was you know it's easy to look at Mohis and see the band and think he's you know he's, he's, he, I mean he's a larger than life character you have to give him that his charisma his energy is amazing but Jazzy's just the guy that's with me he's playing you know but he's the real he's the bad he, everything is him. They were working on the Princess album in 2011 before the issues that led to the split started coming up but we'll get to that later. <laughs> In October 2010, Don Jazzy uploaded a cover art for the remix of the Banji's track, Mr. Endowed, featuring Snoop Dogg on his Twitter account. I can't help but notice how active Don Jazzy was with his Twitter account. He already had more than 200k followers before any Nigerian musician or producer could catch up. But the funny part be say, he was also following more than 30k people at the same time. I feel like his Twitter account was a crucial tool that helped him grow connection underground and gave him more hand in the industry. Bro, Jazzy go open in laptop. You get that? That's why you get that thing where they call Tweet Deck. Yeah! Remember Twitch deck? Oh man. Yeah, it's on your laptop. You don't need to be doing it on your phone. You have everything. Jazzy was the king of Twitter, bro. On the 9th of February 2011, they dropped the remix of Mr. Endown. And it was during this period, before the video shoot with Snoop Dogg, that they went on an invitation to visit Kanye West at Mercer Hotel in New York City. You see, before this time, the band serendipitously crossed path with Kanye West in Dubai. Seizing the opportunity to meet him, he requested him to listen to his song and that he had plans to push his music into America. Kanye did and loved the song, so he requested the band to bring along his producer, Don Jazzy, while coming to the US, and that was how the invitation came about. It was a crazy moment for the Mohit crew. I mean, Kanye at this time was already a big artist with his label Good Music. Man, Mount, I they tell you, Pusha T, John Legend, Kid Cudi, Big Sean, Omo, that kind of connection will be easy something new. It took Don Jazzy until he met Kanye West to believe the band was telling the truth. And we got to Nigeria. I remember the first person we told at that time was Don Jazzy that we met Kanye West. He said, I beg, I beg, I beg. <laughs> After the meeting, they went on to LA as planned to shoot the video with Snoop. Yo, the band and Don Jazzy get back to New York ASAP. There's still work to be done. Oh shit? No worries, boss. Coming soon. Yes, boss. See you soon. Kanye tweeted this on the 1st of March 2011 or more everywhere went crazy that day I did tell you. You could imagine how the news would look after getting an incredible collaboration with Snoop Dogg and now they are being called up by Kanye West. No need to even compete, Mohit automatically became the number one label in Nigeria if not Africa after that week. Within that same period, Don Jazzy also confirmed he was working on a track with Jay-Z and Kanye for an upcoming album. Crazy things were happening man. On the 17th of June 2011, Complex and Forb confirmed that the band and Don Jazzy had been signed to Good Music Label. On August 8, 2011, Watch the Throne album was released with Don Jazzy Cook producing the track Lift Up featuring Beyonce, Jay-Z and Kanye West. On the 12th September of that same year 2011, the band performs live on stage with Kanye West at a Coco concert London. Everything was going so great, so smooth and so unbelievable for Mohit record. But now what's in Apple after now I the reason. On the 17th of March 2012, Don Jazzy posted a tweet saying, Good day friends. So sorry I have been away for long as I have been going through some changes in my life. It is with a heavy heart that I announce the end of a long era and the beginning of a new one. Some of the rumors you've all heard recently are sad but true. The way forward now is to make sure I keep bringing you guys more of the beautiful music you all love to dance to. 
and to end the old era i will be donating the proceeds of my production catalog from day one till date to five charity organization thanks it's don jazzy again this tweet was to confirm the rumors about the breakup of Mohit's record between Don Jazzy and The Bunch. Two days later, The Bunch dropped the video to his single Oliver Twist with Kanye West as a cameo in the video, produced by Don Jazzy but none of the Mohit record members appeared on the video. This confirmed the news about the split. Now everyone is confused like, what's going on? How come the split? This should be their prime year. So why break up now the industry needed them the most to connect the door to the American land? After this tweet, one month later there were rumors of an altercation between both parties fighting for the ownership of Mohit with some uncertain email leaks and deleted tweets. In the email, Don Jazzy said the bank should pay all the money Mohit holds and the bank should stop saying he owns Mohit because only 60% of the song belong to Mohit and the remaining 40% belong to individual artists. Don Jazzy also said in the email that he was done working with the bank. The band didn't like what Don Jazzy said. He argued that the original deal was a 50-50 split in making songs and questioned some money matters, like a deal with Samsung and a Bentley car he bought for Don Jazzy. When the co shared his thought on Twitter, he didn't believe some of the things said in the email and supported Don Jazzy. See here, the content in this email may or may not be correct, but he followed for waiting Corsa. Now, to be sincere, I can't pinpoint what the actual cause of the breakup might be, but everything seems to have started after their visit and signing with Kanye West's Good Music record label. Don Jazzy expressed his discomfort about how expensive it was for them to keep up with the foreign level, that they didn't need to go there and that Nigeria was enough. But on the other hand, the band felt Don Jazzy wasn't seeing his vision to take things to the next level. So Don Jazzy ended the partnership, insisting that the band takes his catalog and move on, while Don Jazzy retained the ownership of the label. Now I know this because the band said it in an interview on The Truth with Olisa, the former co-owner of Storm's record. And Jazzy really, really expressed his discomfort, like, listen, this place is too expensive, we're spending money, we're going to stay there, since they have for Nigeria, we're already bosses here, we don't need all this, maybe we just stay here, maybe. and I'm like, Almost there, like. This was what led to the dissolution of the label. The band also laid accusation on Dr. Seed, stating that he was the main reason why the group broke up, concerning a leaked voice recorded conversation between Dr. Seed and David Doe, where Dr. Seed said that the band's light was too much and was overshadowing them. Just that because your brand and your, your star is too much, it's a big, it's overshadowing. He said his light was too much, it was overshadowing us. This sparked a divisive reaction among fans, leading to the emergence of factions who passionately took side. Some supported the band, some supported Don Jazzy, and Dr. Seed was left to take the fall of the course of the whole incident. It was a conversation taken out of context. Me and my guys, like the guys, guys have, yeah. in a room having a heated conversation. Yeah, yeah. Somebody feeling very sly with himself. Started recording, rec started recording the conversation. And you gonna explain tire. <laughs> so the band left Mohit record with his brother K Switch and formed his label DKM, The King's Men, which later became DB Records. Why Don Jazzy had to forfeit Mohit to avoid controversies and form the label we all know today as Marvin Records. Sincerely speaking, from my own point of view, it's been 12 years after this incident. I believe the breakup was bound to happen anyways. We can't leave certainty for uncertainty, and also opportunity comes only or maybe once. Don Jazzy and the band really came a long way, and both of them made the decision they felt was best for themselves. The band was an opportunist. He felt the need to seize the chance for global recognition. Why for Don Jazzy? He wasn't ready to risk the known for the unknown. He felt the foreign land wasn't yet ready for the Afrobeat sound and didn't want to take chances. I went to the market. I looked at the market and from from my own understanding, the market was not ripe enough. It was not ready. I had other people that were in Nigeria. Wanico was still here. Dr. Seed was still here. The Prince was still here. I, I couldn't just jump and just stay in America there, wasting money in hotels and flying privileges and moving in proximity with where they are or around where they were. And why, where we were making the money was suffering. I feel everybody did what they felt was right. And that's exactly what makes us human. How about you? What do you think? My name is Milo Hillary. Please don't forget to subscribe. A few years later. And you don't go and some water again. And my private chest and run off. But I want to dance to pray. I'm a man of a broken. If your boyfriend comes in, I'm